web components are reusable, framework agnostic components. However, the basic API requires a lot of effort to create those components. Luckily, we have Lit to fix this. Hey you awesome developer, my name is Sven and let's directly dive into today's topic. Most front-end developers are familiar with at least one component-based web framework like Angular, React or Vue. Web components on the other hand are less popular, but they are a web standard. This means with those we don't have to ship a whole web framework to the client just to make components work. The issue with web components is the low-level API. They don't provide templating or state management, for example. This gap can be filled by Lit. Lit provides us a very performant templating mechanism and reactive state management via custom properties. The templating mechanism in Lit is a bit unusual. It uses tech template literals to achieve this. The benefit of tech template literals is that it's ECMAScript 2015 standard. Let's have a look at an example. In our package JSON we have lit as dependency and we use Vite and TypeScript during development. Currently we render our application here, but for now let's get rid of this and simply render an HTML template with lit. Let's create the file. Let's create a simple template. And let's render this template to the DOM. Okay, I forgot to comment out this application import. We now see that by rendering to the document body, the div is added at the end of the body. We can use this templating outside of lit as well. We can use the lit HTML package for this. Worth noting is that I installed the lit plugin to have this syntax highlighting for HTML. It's available for various IDEs. Okay, now we saw how basic templating works. Let's reactivate our app. There it is. And let's now have a closer look at our application. The entry point to our application is a custom element. We have some styles and then we have the render function which uses lit's html tag template literal function to render out the template. Let's now look at state management. For this we will create our own component. First we create our custom element. We inherit from lit element. And to register this as a custom element we can use the decorator function. Let's simply call it state management. So we need a render function. Now we want to have a look at properties. Now we can simply add this property in the template. I accidentally placed the component in the wrong directory. Let's place it in the source directory and import it from the app. We can now add the name of the component here and we should be able to switch to it. Here it is rendered out. Let's now see how we can change this property. We have the application with the shadow root here and in there we have our component rendered here. And this component holds our property. Let's now simply change the property here we set the prop to foo. We see how this component renders the new property. 
But what lit also does by default, it watches the attributes. So we can simply change an attribute instead of changing the property itself. And this should also be reflected. We see how the property updates. And if we read it out here, we also see that the value is bar now. So properties define our component inputs. Let's have a look at local state within a component. We can use the state decorator to create a local state. We declare the property as private in TypeScript because it shouldn't be accessed from outside. Now we can access our state within our render function, for example. So here we see how the state is rendered into our DOM. Let's now update the state internally. For this example, let's simply implement a lifecycle hook. Let's now switch to the component and we see how the state updates here. Okay, this is how state management works in lit. Another important part in lit are the directives. There are some built-in directives that you can use directly from the lit library, but you can also create your own custom directives and the documentation for this is very well written. In general, directives are simply functions that you can use in dynamic parts of your template. There are synchronous and asynchronous directives in lit. The nice thing about asynchronous directives is that they can emit a random value at a random point of time. This allows us to use them for fine-grained reactivity, so we don't have to call the render function again. To showcase this, Let's create a new component. This component will simply implement a render function. Let's use the until directive to see how this works. We simply create a promise. Then we simply render out the promise with the until directive. Let's now Place this in the application. I forgot to return the, the template here. Switch to the component and we see loading and then it resolves with foo. Let's now validate that the render function is only called once and the asynchronous directive emits the result. For this we can simply create a lock point in the fine grained reactivity component over here. And let's switch through. When we switch to the component it is it locks once and when the promise resolved the render function is not called again. In the case of promises, we only have one resolved value, but if you want to consume an observable from RxJS, for example, you can create your own directive. If you want to see a sample implementation of this, you can have a look at this video. If you enjoyed this content so far, feel free to leave a like on this video. Now that we know how it feels like to implement web components with lit, let's have a look at the performance improvements 
that lit brings to our web components. First we have the templating which is solved with tag template literals. The nice thing about those templating functions is that the static parts are separated from the dynamic parts that are passed into the tag template literal. This way when re-rendering a template lit doesn't have to check the static parts at all but it only has to check whether at least one of the dynamic values has changed. This can be achieved with a reference comparison. This makes the change detection and re-rendering very efficient. Second, we have the state management with reactive properties. If you synchronously change multiple properties on a component, it will only re-render once. To validate this, let's simply create a lock point here. And let's update two properties at once. It only should trigger one render cycle. Here it is. Last but not least, we have fine grained reactivity in lit enabled by the asynchronous directives. If you want to know how to integrate RxJS into lit, you can have a look at this video next. In this sense, stay awesome, never stop learning, and see you in the next video.